podcast hosts Gabe and Leo discuss topics that directly and indirectly affect the LGBTQ plus community. Their generation gap has them seeing the world through very different points of view. They fight, they argue, they laugh, and they get off topic. But they make sense most of the time. Are you ready for this episode of Let's Talk Trans? Well, let's get started. All right, hey, this is a live episode of Let's Talk Trends. We're not even recording it. Well, we are recording it, but there's no pre-recording, so what happens, happens. It's actually kind of cool. So we'll see what does happen, or maybe doesn't happen. I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but we're going to find out. (laughs) All right, hey, welcome to Sunday Night. Like I said, it's Let's Talk Trends. I'm your host, Gabriel. Leo's on the other side of the wall, doing what the Leo does best, which is... Um, I I, I really don't know at this point, so we're just going to leave it at that. Um, it's been, it's been interesting. Uh, we had a, I had a, we had a, I had a, I'm not sure who had a, but there was something that happened. Um, so I, I got to tell you guys first off, all right, one, it's been an insane week. Um, just a roller coaster of emotions, a roller coaster of events, just tons of stuff going on. And you just, I mean, like, to to get to get to the weekend, it was, it was like I said, it was just utterly insane. There was just so much going on and so much happening that uh, it really, really, really was, um, like I said, an, an absolutely insane week. Uh, Kai graduated. Both of the kids are done with school. Um, Kai started her first uh, full time job tonight, and. I went back to work uh, after, you know, COVID. So it's, like I said, it's literally been an absolutely insane week. So that being said, um, I had to tell you, like I said, the, um, so I, I'll, I'll go right to it. So I think everybody knows that uh, Leo and I's family are not quite as supportive as we would hope. Um just, I don't want to say, uh, kind of go under the gu- the guise of we're trying, we, we really are trying, you know, you, you've been, you know, one way for umpteen odd years, or 40 years in my case, 40 plus years, yes, I'm dating myself, whatever, and, you know, it's we're trying, it's going to take some getting used to, and da 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 and, uh, you know, maybe because I'm a teacher, I, I tend to be a patient person, I, I like to think that I'm a patient person. I give people the benefit of the doubt. And um, my, my, my mother, I'll just, I'm going to call it spade a spade. My mother um, has a, a very hard time. Some days she'll call me Gabe. Some day she'll dead name me. Um, some days it's the pronoun. Some days it's not. It's kind of almost like what she's in the mood to do. And uh, some days, you know, I'll correct her. Some days I won't. Primarily because I get that look, um, you know, the eye roll, the the excuse, whatever the case may be, and I, and I put up with it. I put up with it because um, my stepdad passed away. Um, she is the closest grandparent my kids have. Um, she lives with my sister. You know, there there's a million of one excuses I guess I can use to put up with it. Does it bother me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's really no way to to put it other than yes, of course it bothers me. Um, do I do I think I'll get to a point where I'll get fed up? Mm, yeah. Do I know how to handle it? Do I know how to go about? Um, I, I guess do I know how to go about making sure that it doesn't happen? Um, I don't know. I don't want to say again, but. You know what I mean? Like, do I know how to go about making sure that it's not something that's not going to happen again? Um, no, I have no clue. So, anyway, uh, we we get to that. We've, we've gotten to that point. My, um, I went over to play Cards Against Humanity the other night with my mom and some of her friends. Um, and, and 
I don't know if it's a political thing or not. They're they're Republicans. I'm an independent. We'll we'll just lay all the facts out on the table. And now, don't get me wrong. My mom's friends are they're good. They're good about it. Um, the the wife. Um, I'm not going to name them. Uh, the wife. She actually wore a pride shirt. You know, had the rainbows on it, and she was very proud of it. She showed it off to me. She's like, "What do you think?" I'm like, "This is cool." And uh, her husband is yeah. He he tries. And and if I correct him, he's like, yeah, you're right. Uh, so anyway, so we're playing cards against humanity, and uh, the husband misgenders me, and I went, you mean he? And he's like, what? Oh yeah, he. I'm like, thank you. And my mother's like, Ugh, okay, whatever, you know. And I, like I said, I let that slide because it's it's my mother. Um. And about a half hour later, it happens again. And, I, of course, I correct him again. Because, like I said, these people are friends. And I know that they don't mean to do it. Um, it bugs me a little bit because they've known me less. Um, so they've really never known me as a she. They've always known me as Gabriel. But uh, it happens, apparently. So anyway, again, they correct themselves. And I get... Oh, just get over it from my mother. I, I mean, like, my, my jaw dropped. My, 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 like, literally my jaw dropped. And it made me realize in that split second that it's not, oh, well, you're 40 plus years old. This takes some getting used to. It's not, um, oh, I messed up. I'm sorry. It's, I refuse to accept that you are Gabriel. You are always going to be my daughter. There is absolutely nothing. There is absolutely nothing and no way that I will be able to convince my mother that I am not a girl. That I am not Gabriel. Till her dying day, she will misgender me. She will not call me the appropriate name. I can guarantee it now at this point. And she will do the same exact thing to Leo. So. I now find myself in a conundrum of... Well, a conundrum. We'll just leave it at that. It's a conundrum. Because now I have to go... Okay. Do I want that person in my life? Do I want that... and? You know, when it's your friend... I'm sorry, guys. I'm itching my eyeballs. The allergies are... The pollen is just horrific. Um, you know, when it's a person who's not biological, when it's a person who's not family, it's not that big of a challenge. You you can cut that line. Um, you know, you can always say, you know, I want a, a circle of friends around me who are inclusive, who care, who are compassionate, who will treat you with respect. And you can weed out the ones that don't. And the, we'll... I think most people have said this. I, I, I agree with it completely that the smaller circle, the better. You know, I'd rather a small, tight-knit circle than this huge group of people. Um, and But the thing of it is, is that for me, and, and I don't know where this this sense of family, honor, loyalty type mentality comes around. I've always been this way. I, I don't know if it's... It was never instilled on me. It was never something my parents insisted on or or, or, or toted or, or said anything like that. But to me, um, family line is important. I mean, like, I've, I've tracked my genealogy. I know where my bloodlines um, are, where they... I, I've, I've tracked the family line back to Rome. Um... And we're talking like ancient Rome, like Jesus Rome. Um, all right, maybe not that far back, about 800, 700s, things like that. Close enough. Anyway, um, so the thing is, is that do I, can I, should I just kind of wash my hands of my mother? Um, like I said, for my sake, my like I said, and and... And here's where my problem lies. Um, it's more for my child's sake than mine. My child is going to develop... Leo is going to develop his own 
um, opinion of the situation, and he's going to decide for himself sooner or later. Um, he's more than capable now. And I'm almost positive that he kind of has at this point. Um, but, you know, there are people who are transgender whose families have done the same thing, and they can just cut them off, and that's it. You know, and it hurts. It, it's excruciating. I understand that. Um, nobody wants to disown a family member. Nobody wants to disown, you know, someone who has birthed them or been there from day one or raised them or taught them how to ride a bike or any of those things. Um, you know, in in a sense, you know, yes and no on the props on that one um, because uh, my parents divorced when I was little. I was like eight or nine years old when that happened. Um, and my mom wasn't around a lot. Um, not until I became a teenager. So there's there's probably like, I don't know, an eight-year span where my mom's not in the picture. I shouldn't say that. Not not in the picture, but the infrequency of her existence, or the infrequency of her visit, um, her participation, let's put it that way, her infrequency of her participation um, was in such that she did not play a critical role in critical times. I, I, I went through a lot of um, teenagerhood or teenagerism without her um, and relied solely on my father. And um, so it, it, the bond is not as strong as it is with my father. That being said, my father um, my father's a, a different kind of creature. My, my dad and my stepmom uh, live about two hours away from us who is our, who is our yeah, yeah, I can talk tonight. I'm even trying to talk slow. Um, you know, they're they're further away. I'm sorry, I'm messing with my hair now. They're, uh, like I said, two hours away. We don't see them as, as frequently. Uh, we don't even talk, which is really odd, because you'd think in an age of communication where I talk to you guys twice a week, I could talk to my father once a week. Um, but the thing of it is, is that, you know, when we do talk, he... He either avoids um, genders or he avoids names. And he does that because he does not want to offend. I understand why he does it. He does it because he doesn't want to offend. He does it because um, he doesn't want to you know, misgender and, and cause the psychological emotional issues that he sees as a parent. Oh, dude, you're listening. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you so much. Um, and so, you know, again, he was there from, from day one. He <laughs> burnt macaroni. We're talking like burnt macaroni and cheese and ramen noodles when cooking was kind of a, a not his forte. And I can remember watching ALF and Star Trek with my dad and things like that. Uh, he took me to boot camp. He he took me actually to the MEP station uh, when I when I graduated. He was there when I when I messed up. And don't get me wrong, when I when I messed up in high school, my mom was there too. My mom did come and, and bail me out. I'm not saying that my mother just vanished and wasn't a parent, but what I'm saying is is that the bond with my dad is stronger with my than my it is with my mother, and therefore like I could never cut a tie with my father ever. I couldn't. Um, but I could very well cut a tie with my mom if it got to that point. Now, the reason why I say that, okay, well, the people are going, well, how could you cut ties with your parents? There are um, transgender people who listen and cisgender people who listen. And I know there's people out there who are going, family, no, family's everything, man. You know, family's family. Um, family isn't always blood, for starters, right? We all agree with that. But the other thing, again, is that... Um, you know, as a transgender individual, a person with a, a mental dis a mental disorder, um, a mental disability, however you want to see it, a psychological instability. I like that terminology. I've heard that one now recently. A psychological disability, um, or psychological instability, by ignoring the instability. We don't ignore other instabilities. We don't ignore other mental issues. But there are people who. Gender, ignore gender dysphoria and pretend it doesn't exist. Um, that it will simply go away or that it's a fad. And they do so much more harm than they do good. 
uh, and by that, what I mean is, like I said, mentally, I'm a, I'm a strong individual. Um, whether it's because I'm in my 40s, because I'm in the service, uh, because I was raised that way, all the above, who knows? Um, mentally, okay, I'm in a, a good frame of mind when it comes to my confidence as far as being transgender. Not everyone fits that bill. And that doesn't just mean, like, teenagers or adults too um you know i I read on one of our 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 facebook pages um one of the the dozens of transgender facebook pages that you know there was a person whose whose brother just kind of you know refused and and didn't accept it and they got into it and there was a whole lot of you know obscenities and fus and 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 that you know you know that that hurts um, and like I said, you guys know this. I, I'm always one for the studies. I'm always one to back what I say with statistical fact. Um, there was a study. It was done. Oh my God, it was done. It, it was done six years ago. So some of the data is a little skewed, um, being that you know there's so many more people who have come out as LGBTQ plus. But you know we're talking. You know we're talking suicide attempts. We're talking. Um, People who, you know, truly, you know, um, have to deal with this rejection. And when they did this, what they did was they, they, they did a study. They did a study and they grabbed um, about 6,000 people, about a little, little under 6,500 people um, that were uh, identified as LGBTQ+. And what they found was that those that, of those people – of those people, 54% of them, so over half, so, you know, 3,000, you know, 3,000, what, 3,200 and some, 3,300 and some, 3,300 of them, had attempted suicide in some way, shape, form, or another. Think of that. Um, it was either an attempted suicide or uh, drug abuse or alcohol to, and here's the thing: it wasn't just because you can't. It was before you go. Oh well, you know anybody can attempt suicide. People get depressed. Those things, those that attempt or the abuse or the the alcohol addiction, it was all due to coping with transgender related discriminations, specifically those within their family. Um. I I can't like I said I this these numbers are insane. And this, um, like I said, and you know me, I'll, I'll share, um, I'll, I'll share the, uh, I'll share the, the, the data, the study with you, with you. Um, it comes from Rudders, and, uh, it was published back in 2016, like I said, May 2016. Um, it, it did, hasn't been updated since, so, like I said, the numbers are off because, you know, it only talks about a certain percentage of people, and we now know, you know, that there are, you know, millions of us here in this country. Um, but it was absolutely, just like I said, absolutely insane that 54% of the participants experienced low amounts of um, family rejection, okay? Um, 31% experienced a moderate amount and 14% um, percent experienced a high amount. So here's the thing. 54 were lower. 54 had a low amount, so maybe one person did. Out of that 100, 31% then experienced a moderate. So let's say two, maybe three, an aunt, an uncle, maybe a grandparent. 14 or a high percent. They might have gotten kicked out. A whole family shut them down. So let, let's do those numbers. I mean, if like let's, let's add them up real quick, okay? So 54 and 31, that's 85. 85. And then if you add 14 on there, that's 99% of that population. 99% of a study of 6,400 people. 99% of them had a family member who chose to either not speak to them or to reject them completely. That's, that's kids, spouses, parents, aunts, uncles think about it I mean like like I said I mean family family isn't just blood okay and we've we've talked about that before um, there's more to family than than blood um, 
like I said, I, I talk about these guys frequently. Um, the Wilkesbury Warriors, the semi-pro football team that I photograph. Um, I've talked about them in the last couple of podcasts. Um, these guys have taken me in uh, lock, stock, and barrel. They don't care that I used to be, uh, you know, I used to identify as a female. They don't care that I'm taking testosterone. They don't. They don't give a darn. They they don't they don't worry about my demo ec- my echo demographics. They don't worry about what I do for a living. They don't worry about any of that stuff. They're there, you know. Um, you know, we can joke about anything. I could go to them tonight and say, "Hey, look, I just need to talk," and one or two of them. Well, whoever I go to would listen. These guys don't. That that's family. Now they don't. Obviously, they they've never you know met me, the other me, the me before me, the other me. How do I word that? The pre me. That sounds weird. Or right, the dead me. Let's call it that. The dead me, because we call it a dead name. Um, it, just like and like I took Leo to the last game. Well, you know, I introduced Leo as Leo. You know, they would. You know, unless unless they knew, unless they listened to podcasts, they would never know that Leo used to be a girl, used to identify as a female. They would never know that. Um, and and the thing of it is, and the, the nice thing is, and like I said, I've talked to them uh, multiple times on these topics. They don't care. It doesn't it doesn't affect our relationship because it doesn't affect them directly. They're not worried about that part. They're not worried about who I am. They. They're not worried. They are worried about who I am. They're not worried about who I used to be. Let's put it that way. Um, and that's the thing that makes, like I said, this type, that type of family, so fabulous. Um, the firehouse used to be that way. We won't go there. Um, firehouses change. People change. You get new members. Things like that happen. Whatever. Uh, and we won't even talk about work because work is just well, it's just work, and it's a whole nasty, ugly, you know, thing all by itself. We won't go there. So, again. So, the topic is, what do I do? Or I should say the question is, what do I do? How do I broach it? Because um, we've all, I think we've all, like I said, if 99% of those people have faced something like that, most of us have have come into contact with someone who did not approve of something that we've done, did not approve of a lifestyle, did not approve of where we live or what job we've done. And that's the thing. It doesn't even have to be the fact that I'm transgender. Um, I think everybody's had a family member who didn't agree with something. They don't like the way we cut our hair. They don't like the way we, who we date, what we do. I thought you would grow up and be a doctor someday. I thought you'd grow up to be a lawyer. I thought you'd grow up to be this. Um, I thought you'd grow up to do, you know, uh, whatever. Um, it's, it's like the guy... <laughs> We, we were laughing about this the other night. It was like uh, when I found out that uh, I was having Leo. Um, I called my mom and said, hey, guess what? I'm pregnant. And the first thing out of her mouth was, whose child is it? I was married. Um, you know, is, is, it was, is Rick the father? And I, I remember going, um, I'm sorry, wait. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, a hoe. I, I'm, not a, I'm not the sleep around type. It's not my thing. Why would you ask me that question? Um... Yeah, I mean, so I guess you could probably say that mom and I have always had a, um, what's the word I want? It starts with a T. Uh, it's not, it's not a turmoil, but it's tumultuous, tumultuous, tumultuous. Well, it's something like that. We've always had this very bumpy uh, relationship. I, I'm definitely not the heavy favorite when it comes to kids, but whatever. I don't know if anybody is at this point. Um, yeah, we won't go there. Hmm. I'm sorry. I keep drinking. Um, my throat keeps uh, getting scratchier and scratchier. My testosterone level has gone up. So um, the voice has kind of gone down a lot. And uh, I, I did get a couple of nice compliments on that one. Uh, a, a friend of mine saw me who hadn't seen me in a while. And she was like, wow, your voice got deep. And I was like, it got deep? Really? And then we were joking around because I can make it go so much deeper. Than it used to, and um, I, I don't even know. Like, and, and we sang it McKen or oh, at Kai's um, graduation, and I, I couldn't find the octave. I, I had no idea where I sing now. It's kind of funny too. But all right, 
I derailed. That was a squirrel moment. So, uh, again, what do we do? Back to Nana. What do we do? Do we, um, what do I do? You tell me. What do you think I should do? Should I cut ties? Should I continue to be patient and hope that eventually, like I said, sooner or later she's going to be calling, you know, this this bearded guy with an M on the driver's license and an M on the birth certificate. Sooner or later she's going to be calling a bearded guy by a girl's name and people are going to wonder. Um, you know, and then there's the other thing, and we talked about this a little bit, um, you know, once Leo's, you know, off and done with college in a couple of years, do I just simply pack up and move, go to a new town where no one knows that other person? Um, you know, the total fresh start mentality. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if there is, there's, let's just put it this way. There probably isn't a simple answer. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I really, truly don't know. I wish I did. Um, I wish it was cookie cutter and, and simple and easy and harmonious. Um, but like I said, the truth of the matter is it's, it's none of those things. Um, I can't just, like I said, I can't just cut off a parent and disown. It's just not right. I can't. Um, does that mean that I'm in for a world of discomfort and a world of pain? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that the thing will, I think what will happen is, and, and again, this is just from my own perspective and from, you know, my own history, my own psychological history here, is that I just won't have Leo go up so often. You know, Leo just won't be required to visit Nana when he wants to, or when he doesn't want to. I won't make, I won't put him in those situations. Um, you know, because like I said, you know, my mental health, my mental well-being, uh, it's a little, it's a little stronger. Um, it's a little bit more, I guess, my skin's a little thicker, you know, for lack of a better term. And, I, again, I shouldn't, ex I mean, like, okay, this is where, alright, let me, let me explain this. This is where my mind going, alright, and maybe you'll go with me. So, um, to me that, to me, to me, exposing a child to a person who, uh, is, we'll, we'll say it, transphobic. Um, even though I, I don't think that, like, as cut and dry as the terminology for transphobic is, as cut and dry as the definition is, she's not harsh. Um, but do I think she's transphobic? On, on a scale, on a, you know, yes. Um, it's not like you can't be, like, a little racist. You either are or you aren't. You can't be a little transphobic. You either are or you aren't. Um, if I expose a child to a person, a transgender child to a person who is knowingly transphobic, then in a sense it's child abuse. It's that I mean, that's where my mindset goes. If I willing, that would be like if I put a, a, a if I put a child who has been sexually assaulted in front of a child predator. Well, one, I'm being stupid and asking for it, but I'm I'm putting that child in undue or unnecessary risk psychologically. So. To me, granted, they are two completely opposite ends of a spectrum, um, and it, there's nothing illegal about transphobia. Okay, a person's entitled to their opinion until they act on it in a stupid way, um, where you know pedophilia. We won't go there, um, or in child predators. No, but what I'm saying is, is that it, it's a form of abuse, in my opinion. I'm, I'm, I would be psychologically abusing Leo if I put him in that environment, knowing full well what my mother could potentially do to him on a psychological level. That means that I am putting myself in harm's way on a psychological level every time I'm around her. So sooner or later, am I going to wear down? Absolutely. My hope, my hope is that one of two things happens. She either comes around or I endure long enough for my children to grow up and make their own decisions and my mother to figure out why it is that people don't want to hang out with her. Any of those two could happen. Um, fortunately, like I said, um, you know my my biological father and my stepmother um, are are timid on the topic, but for the most part, seem to be um, understanding. My brothers are awesome. My I have I have two uh, younger brothers. Actually, I have three younger brothers, but two that still live at home. And um, when I whenever there's something that comes up. Um, you know, like when Leo had his tea day, 
um, they explained it to my dad. They explained it to my parents. Um, it was kind of cool. Um, so in again, though, that's a younger generation kind of stepping up and helping a, an older generation that doesn't understand. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah. I so I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see what happens. And you know, the funny thing is, is I'm actually my mother listens to my mother doesn't listen to these, so I don't even have to worry about this at this point. But um, I'm really, really curious um, because, like I said, I, I know a lot of people have um, had these moments and, and they've listened. And uh, I think we've all kind of experienced these times. I, I'd love to, uh, you know, hear your stories. Not in a sense where, you know, um, you know I, I relish in other people's misery because I don't. Of course not. Oh, my God. That would be horrible. Um, but more so, so that there's common ground. Um, and, and maybe you have other ways that I can help my mother, you know, come to terms with the fact that I'm transgender and that Leo is transgender, um, you know, and that she has a pansexual grandchild and she has a cisgender grandchild and well, three cisgender grandchilds at the moment, children at the moment. Um, and, and one, um, you know, demi boy, uh, grandchild. And that this is not a phase, and it's not an age thing, and it's not um, something we're planning on growing out of, or you know um, that we're not. It's not against religion. It's not a a slap in the face of the Almighty or anything to that effect. Um, this is who we are, and and she has a she has this grand opportunity to be in their lives and watch them grow and. Like I said, graduate and move on in college and become adults and and see the the product, or she can choose to not. Because let, let's face it, ultimately, I mean, as we get to that we get to that point as people who are, are transgender, people who are um, psychologically I don't want to say I don't say psychologically abused by people other people, but we get to that point where we've had enough. And we need to step back. And it's funny because, like, I'm doing that. I, I swear I'm not Italian. I'm doing this with my hands. Like, I'm, I'm actually pushing back with my hands um, as a gesture that, you know, we need to take that step back. And we need to push away just a little bit to give ourselves that freedom, to give ourselves that de stressor, that lack of, of, of breath, or to take a breath, um, that lack of stress. And, you know, we have that. Like I said, those people have that choice. They, they can either you know, be the person that causes us to push them away or they can be the person that we choose to hug. And, um, because all we, all we want, that, we're not pushing an agenda. There's, there's no transgender agenda, I swear. There's no gay agenda. There's no LGBTQ plus agenda. Um, we're not out to, to convert the world or, or change anything. Um, well, I, I take that back. Of course, we're out to change something. Um, but there's no like mass agenda. We're not taking over the government. I can't wait for the first transgender senator. Holy crap! Um, but what we are out to do is to be accepted, to change minds. That it's okay to be different. That's the change we're looking for. We just want to be accepted, to be accepted as who we are, what we are. That's all. Like I said, um, you know, I've been a fireman for twelve years. I was completely okay in the fire company before I became transgender. Before I came before I came out as being transgender. Then all of a sudden I wasn't as good as everybody else. Or I wasn't as accepted as everybody else. So, I don't know. You decide. Well, we're going to wrap this episode up. And I greatly, greatly appreciate you guys listening to this live episode of Let's Talk Trans. This is episode 35. 35 episodes and over a thousand downloads. My God, you guys, if I would have known six months ago that a thousand people would have downloaded and listened to me rant about the weirdest things, um, I, you, there's no way. You, you could never have convinced me otherwise. Um, but you have, and we're going to keep going. And I'll try and get Leo on, and maybe Leo will do a live one with me one of these nights. And, you know, I know... I know Ace and Chloe and a couple others are actually itching because they had a lot of fun when we, we did that group one. So, 
and we definitely need to get some more interviews going because we know how to do it now. So anyway, I'm going to leave you with that. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, enjoy your mid-June because midsummer's coming. First day of summer is right around the corner. Holy buckets. Father's Day is coming up. Woohoo! Woohoo! My first Father's Day. Um, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I know that sounded weird. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to leave you, like I said, I'm going to leave you with that. I hope that you embrace yourselves. It is a completely okay to be different. It's, it's the uniqueness that makes the world go round. If everybody were the same, the world would be boring. The world might self destruct, too, come to think of it. Ugh, depending on who we were all like. Anyway, um, enjoy your summer. Stay true to you. Go out there and fry, fly your freak flag and make all the difference in the world. All right? All right. So, peace out. I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good night. We know we did. If you like us and you want to hear more, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on Spotify, YouTube, or Google Podcast, or wherever it is that you get your podcast from. Until next time, stay true to you.